After residential detention, she was transferred to a separate facility where she'd have cellmates. They never turn the lights off? No, nope. neither in, deten in the detention centre. Wow. So it was, and even at the halfway house, the lights were on. You're joking. No. Wasn't the half... Oh, sorry, yeah. So, yeah, on the remember. plane, yeah. Yeah. was the first time I'd experienced darkness at night. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah. Wow. And, of course, now, here, um, in a normal bed, in a normal house, I can turn the lights off. Bliss. Wow. And you were teaching yourself languages in there. <laughs> yes. Because I'd done German in high school, and um, I improved my Cantonese with my cellmate. I also tried to learn by myself Italian and Spanish and a wee bit of Japanese. I built up a stash of over 200 books and I used to think, wow, this is a book that Nick has lovingly chosen for me yeah. and, um, and has, has held in his hand. And I would just caress the book and keep it close to me. and. Um, and when I could, I, I would put it under my pillow because it was so comforting. And when there were wise words or encouraging words, I would feel that he had written them, along with um, very corny song lyrics. <laughs> I would pretend that he was singing them to me. <laughs> Maybe not Celine Dion. <laughs> Wasn't it Celine Dion? What was the Celine Dion story you were talking about? Oh, right. The song? Yeah. yeah. There's a song, Because You Loved Me, yeah. and in it there are two lines that get me every time. Um, one is, for all the wrongs that you made right, and another one is, just makes me think about everyone who's helped me, is you were my voice when I couldn't speak, because there no one has a voice, and all your voice is quashed. So, um, how did you feel about how the Australian government was handling the case. Did you notice when there was a change in government your, how, how your situation was handled? I certainly felt um, there was more um, engagement and even at the consular visits um, noticeable increase in energy and um, just the amount of things that were being done and I just can't begin to, to thank them. DFAT and the PM and the media and just ordinary people with heart. And Penny Wong. She's amazing. I'd met her in 2014 at a dinner and she was really impressive. So I passed on a message to her because I heard about the tweets that she was sending and all the heartfelt messages and contacting my family and reassuring them. And she actually wrote me um, a personal message back and it wasn't just poly speak or you know the standard stock phrases I really felt that she was a friend who was trying to help me trying to look out for my best interests. Now Lei has fresh air and freedom but adjusting back to normal life won't be without its own challenges. Because of this whole ordeal, I keep expecting you know, people to drop out of the sky and, and arrest me. And maybe it's something I need to get over. That it doesn't happen here. That's going to take some time. Or, you know, something will happen to my children or something of mine will get taken away. Um, so what now? <laughs> um, I have to make up for, you know, absent mummy for the next few years, I think. But um, when they're at school, I'd love to put down my thoughts. Um, I'd love to cook all the new recipes I'd been interested in. Yeah. Um, travel, embrace nature, start a garden. Every time I look at the sky, I can't believe I can look, you know, it's, it's 360 degree view <laughs> as opposed to just a little slit up the top yeah. of the cell. Did you do the school run last week? I did. Yeah? What and was that, that like? It felt so good. <laughs> yeah. I saw um, one of my um, son's friends call out to him as he 
came and I saw the lollipop man who was very friendly and um, just this whole idea that I am now here for them and meeting my daughter's teachers who were so sweet. Yeah. Um, they had been praying for me and I even met one of the teacher's dogs <laughs> <laughs> who my daughter had written about in her letters because they were, I mean family letters are like medication yeah. and when you get them it's, it's a huge boost to the immune system, to, to everything yeah. and when you don't or when you get them really late you feel like a patient who needs to go to dialysis yeah. <laughs> and is missing that treatment. So um, they are so important to people who are detained. I was euphoric when I spoke to the embassy guys um, and just thanking them and wanting to sing because words really fail the amount of gratitude I feel for everyone who has believed me and supported me. You know, I, I work with words and I trust words, but words are useless. What did you sing when you said you sang for joy? Was there a particular song or was it just... I said I feel like one um, phrase perhaps says it better, which is in the first verse of Amazing Grace. It's a song that's very special because it helped me and my cellmates a lot. Um, we may not have the best voices, but when we were softly singing, because singing is actually against the rules and you want to be careful not to be heard, but that song just soothes so much and gives you hope and courage.